Welcome back to my channel, Our Soils are Full of Life. So today we are going to discuss about another important topic in soil science, the soil profile, or interesting topic. So let us go to the definition, soil profile. So very first, as usual, in routine way, we go with the definition. So nothing but it's a vertical section, vertical section of soil, showing a various layers from the surface to the unaffected parent material is known as soil profile, the paints. Shows it's a soil profile means it's nothing but it's a vertical section of our land surface. That means it's a vertical section of, of soil showing the various layers from surface to, to the unaffected parent material is known as soil profile. So in the soil profile, we can see different layers. So though mostly we can see what kind of layers we can see. Layers means in, it, in, in soil science terminology, we should call as horizon. So we have A horizon, B horizon, and C horizon. So these are the master horizons which are present. And coming to that, in EA horizon is completely leachable. So it is all, all the in, in, technically, if I want to say A is a washout horizon, whereas B is a accumulation horizon or leach in joint horizon. So it's coming to the horizon C, so almost very close to the parent material, and where which uh, where the parent material, the pair most of the Parameter is formed from the A horizon C. So the parameter from which the soil is formed is comes under the horizon C. So anyhow, students, overall we will see in detail about these horizons and what is the conditions, what are the what is the conditions present in these horizons, what are the role present of these horizons. We will see. Anyhow, we will we will see in a very elementary aspects. Well, now let's start. Very first, students, a study of profile is very important because. All the historical record, historical record means on what kind of soil process are there, what kind of pedological activities was taken place, everything will be, will be present in the soil profile only. So any, pedolo any pedologist or any soil scientist want to know about the key features of the particular area. So what we should do, we should go through the soil profile only. And this soil profile plays a major role in our present soil classification. So this classification very useful, useful for our regular day-to-day -day applications for agriculture application, being an agriculture graduate, we can most be for agriculture applications, or if he is or he is an engineering student, he can go for engineering applications. So overall students, hypothetically, we as I said, there are O, A, B, C, and R. These are the master horizons. And below that, there are another sub-horizons also is there. So overall students, there are two types of horizons. Are there are master horizons and sub-horizons. Now we will see what are those. Yeah, this is a typical image. This is one sort of rough image for the horizon profile. These are the different different layers or horizons. Now we are going to see one by one. Very first students, we will see the O horizon. So O horizon, it's nothing but it's an organic horizon. Mostly is formed on the upper part of the mineral soil dominated by the fresh and partly decomposed organic matter. So mostly, so this type of horizon we can see only in forest areas. Neither we can't see in grasslands or cultivated soils. This type of, this type of, of uh, horizon we can see only forest areas. And how much, how much, how much organic matter it contains? So horizon may contain around contain more than 30% organic matter. If the mineral fraction has more than 50% clay, or more than 20% organic matter, if the mineral fraction, mineral fraction has lesser clay. So or I'll show the organic matter roughly we can say around 30 to 20, it varies from 30%, mostly we can say 30%. So in this organic horizon also, there are two types of in classified as a two layers. One is one O1 and one another is O2. So O1 is nothing but in O1 horizon. We can see and we, we can see the what are the organic debris are present, what are the residues are present with our naked, whether it's the animal residues or debris or animal residues, we can see with our naked. Egg. No need to for any other aid of microscopes, etc. But in O2 horizon, no, it's completely decomposed. So we can't see, we can't see the nature, original, original nature of the organic compound which was present in the layer. So that's why we can't recognize through the naked egg. So most of the plant origins or plant matter, everything we can't see with our naked eye in O2 horizon. But whereas quite opposite in O1. So O1, we can see the what what are what kind of organic material are there, what kind of residues are present, whether it's a plant residue or animal residue, we can easily identify with our naked eye. So overall, this is what the O horizon. So O horizon is of two types. One is O1 and O2. So O1, we can see the plant and all the organic forms we can see with our naked eye. That means all the residues we can see with, with our naked eye. But in O2, we can't see with our naked eye. So this is completely decomposition was taking place here. 
So this is regarding the ozone, but this ozone present only in a forest area, absent in grasslands and cultivated soil. Coming to the next is called a horizon. So a hor horizon of is completely so horizon of organic accumulation adjacent to the surface and has lost clay, iron, and nitrogen and aluminium. So this layer very adjacent to the organic layer, just below the organic layer. So overall, students here in this layer, you know. So always, as I said in my previous introduction, it is leached out. Everything, all the iron, clay, and all the all the aluminium, everything will be leached out from here. In this air origin also, there are three types. There is A1, A2, and A3. In A1, topmost mineral horizon, adjacent to the surface, yeah, very near to the surface. Uh, there will be accumulation of humi humified organic matter associated with mineral fraction because very near to the organic layer. And darker in color, very darker in color than the lower horizon due to the organic matter. So this A1 is very darker in color when compared with the A2 because it is very adjacent to the O horizon. And coming to the A2, it is completely elevation, maximum elevation of clay, iron, aluminum oxides, and other organic matter. So everything will be why everything will be elevated. So loss of these constants generally result in accumulation of what will happen. So all the iron, aluminum, organic matter, everything will be leached out from the A2 horizon. What will happen? So the loss of this constant general result in accumulation of quartz and other sand, silt, silt size resistant material will be left out. So these are all very strong, very highly resistant to the weather. So generally lighter in color than horizon above and below. So generally this is a, as there is a lot of uh, like, uh, leaching will be there, leaching or elevation is there. That's why the color com combination of this A2 horizon is very lighter when compared with both upper and lower. That means A1 compared to A1 and A3. So this is regarding the A2 and coming to the A3, it's a transition. It's a transition layer. We can see it's a transitional layer between A and B horizon. More dominant in properties of A2 and A1 and A2 above the underlying B horizon. So this horizon sometimes may be absent. So we can sometimes this horizon may be absent in some but in, in specific cases. So here, most of the cases, most of the properties are A1, A2 properties are dominated in this A3 layer. And it was very close to the B1. It's a transition layer. It's a transition layer between the A and B or A and B master horizon. So this is regarding the A horizon. Coming to the next is B horizon. So horizon in which dominated features are accumulation. See, whatever the material was washed out from the A horizon, that means elevation is completely deposited in this B horizon. It's here we can see the, all the accumulation of clay, iron, aluminium, and uh, aluminum are uh, humus along with the, uh, some combination. So all these will be will form a coating of some coating of cisco oxide will be imparted darker color and red color than the overlying horizon. So that's why due to this accumulation, we can see some dark coatings will be there, some clay coatings will be there. So in this B horizon also, this is a washing layer, students. A horizon washout is a washing. So it is elevation will take means elevation will be taken place. So here in B horizon also, there are three types of that B1, B2, and B3. In B1, a transition layer between A, B, and more likely that like A than B. So this B1, it is very close to the A. So what will happen? The prop, most of the properties will be similar to the upper A horizon than B. So it is a transition layer. B1 is a very transitional layer. But coming to the B2, it's a zone of maximum elevation. So elevation, most of the maximum elevation. So all the, whatever the components, whatever the iron, clay, and everything will be washed out from the A horizon or elevated from the from the A horizon will be deposited in the B2 horizon of B horizon. So like this, all the organic matter, so I moved from the upper to downward. So all the clay, aluminum, and that, that may move from down from upper horizons or may have formed in C. So organic matter content is generally very high, color darker than, or than that of A2 horizon above. So this naturally, when compared with A2, because as we discussed in the previous study, A2 was not that much darker because everything was being washed out. And all this washed out material has been accumulated in this B2 horizon. That means, just see for the for this, say whatever the material was, was present in this horizon was completely washed out, was completely, was completely washed out. So this was completely deposited here. So what happened? The color will be very darker when compared to the A. So this is zone is called maximum elevation of clays and iron oxides will be taken place. And another important sublayer uh, is called B2. There's a transition horizon between B and C with the properties similar, more similar to that of the sort of overlying B2. So here the properties will be the transition layer, but the properties will be similar to the B2. This is also this transition layer between the B and C horizon. So B3 is nothing but the transition. Uh, we will see next. It's a C horizon. The next one is C horizon. It is a, it's a horizon below. This solemn, 
a a a a or a plus b origin is called solemn students remember this thing solemn relatively less affected by the soil forming process it is outside zone of the major biological activity so here we can't expect any major biological activity it may it may contain accumulation of carbonates or sulfates of calcium and magnesium so there is some sort of accumulation will be taking place in this sea origin so here you can see that so unconsolidated mineral origin sea origin is nothing but is called unconsolidated mineral origin and coming to the last final one is called r this is a bedrock so underlying uh, underlying consolidated bedrock and it may or may not be appear like a parent rock from which solemn is formed so besides so it is it is may or may not look like a parent material from the solemn may occur so besides so overall students these are the very uh, master horizons like o a b in that we have seen what are the sub horizons everything we have seen but there are some peculiar cases say for example if you are plowing one particular land that uh, that so that particular horizon will give some peculiar features so we will represent so we will represent with this lower case letters so with lower case letters you will indicate for the specific special features of master horizon so mostly if it is ap means it is a plow layer if it is b to t it is called illuvial clay layer so like these are some uh, uh, separate subdivisions are are will be denoted so for example if it is a for example in mostly as i said this this o horizon is present only in forest area so mostly wow, very first layer what we will see in agriculture land mostly a horizon we will see so very first layer what we will do we will plow this layer for our agriculture purpose so generally what notation we should give in that in that case we should give it as a ap so if you denoted if you see any ap if you note if you see this notation ap that is called the plow layer it's a special feature of master horizon if you have any particular special feature if it's the bt it is accumulation of clay so mostly if it is bt means it is a accumulation of clay if it is a b uh i mean bc a means it's a accumulation of calcium like that there are so particular gases which are there when two or more genetically unrelated materials are present in the profile especially this is with this type of situation we present in alluvial or colluvial soils then the phenomena is called lithological continuity that means students you know in alluvial colluvial what will happen means there is a complete depositions will be there so during this depositions we can't get any clear cut genetical uh, genetical material we can't get any clear cut idea about what kind of material was deposited it is it is a lot of we can't get any contrast material we can't get what kind of material was present in there so there is some discontinuity will be there so that discontinuity is called lithological discontinuity so this line is important once read this when two or more genetically unrelated contrasting material are present in, in the profile as mostly in case of alluvial and colluvial colluvial soils this phenomenon is known as lithological continuity this is called lithological continuity and also student this this is indicated mostly this type of lithological continuity was indicated by using of roman letters such as prefixes of master horizon ap b2 like this fits the both two are there so i want to represent as roman letter 2 b2 2 double 2 22 that means it is we are giving as a different notation so if this lithological continuity is there we will represent that with a roman letter so this is regarding the r horizon so overall students some special features and you know we, we are going to learn another uh, important in coming video i will teach what is a pedon what is a polypedon but before going to another video just know some peculiar idea what is a polypedon so polypedon is nothing but soil soil individual or a natural unit of soil that differ from its adjoining unit on the landscape in one or more properties is called the you know polypedon and the term pedon has been proposed by small basic soil entities as a part of continuing mantling of the land so this is regarding and regarding this polypedon we will we will see very detail in the coming video and a pedon coming to what is and this what is a polypedon coming to the pedon is nothing but it's the smallest volume that can call a soil the rest of the pedons must be fit in the range of one series and occurs in a continuous group of polypedons so in a simple understanding students combination of pedons is called poly pedon so come so this thing this is one pedon 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 pedon means some special special characteristics so all this combinedly is called polypedon so we will see all these things in coming classes very interesting things are going going to be happen in our channel so please follow that channel so you can get full details about this soil science so overall students this is regarding the pedons and polypedons which we will discuss in detail in the coming video so that's all for today thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel our soils and please like share and please give valuable comments and this is aditya kishore from oiat india's 
oldest, second oldest university. Thank you very much.